motivation for what's coming in the rest of the summer, but feeling how disappointed you are now, how do you pick yourselves up with such a quick turnaround uh, before the Ashes? Yeah, I mean, uh, clearly it's going to take a couple of days. I think all the guys have um, got a got a few days off now. We're going to have to use that. Um, it's been a been a pretty hectic start to the summer, and it's only going to get obviously busier and busier. So we're going to have to recharge our batteries as well. Um, you know, it's always a diff different feeling, different kit and stuff. And uh, you know, clearly the Ashes is here. Um, and we're going to have to prepare ourselves in that Essex game to make sure we hit the ground running at Trembridge. Uh, Alistair, just to talk about moving forward, I know this is very sort of fresh after the event, but talk about rebuilding. Do you believe that is, this is the group of players who will carry England forward in one-day cricket, or, or do you look for, for fresh blood in that time you've got before 2015? Oh, I think the majority of the squad will be pretty similar. I mean, you can't... Um, you don't you can't look into the future too much, and I'm sure there's some players who are desperately in the county games and youngsters or you know other players who are not on this team were thinking I, I want to get in the, into this squad um, and that's great for competition um, but I would say the majority of this team um, would be you know I would say the majority of the team would be in 2015 you'd hope and um, with fitness and stuff and and form so yeah look it's you know uh, it's obviously not a great place to be in the dressing room at the moment but you know when as I said when you start looking back into the thing what we've done well what which areas can we work on um, and obviously, you know, me and Jilo will have a look at that. A decision in your uh, report, your match report. I think they're confidential, those um, things, so... Uh, Go on. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be good fun. A England batsman gifted India the match or the Indian bowlers won the match? I, I think anyone saw that, that those last few overs, how much the ball spun. It's, as I keep saying, you needed batters in at the end um, to, to knock down not down that title. So I think credit to India. I thought they bowled very well on that wicket. Um, clearly us as a batting unit will be looking at ourselves going, what could we have done better? Alistair, is this your lowest moment as an England captain or as an England player even? Um, I think as an England captain, yeah. Um, you know, we had high hopes coming into this today of achieving something very special. And um, it, we, you know, we had the opportunity. Um, I think we've got to thank the groundsman and his staff for doing a fantastic job to get us out there because um, you know, at least we had the opportunity to win the game. We were sitting here, if we'd have you know, not played the game, uh, you'd always wonder what, what might have been. So, um, you know, credit to all the guys who worked really hard to get us out there. Um, and yeah, it's, it's a tough, tough place at the moment. Um, but, you know, we, we'll look at, I'm sure when the emotion's out of it, we'll look at it and, and we'll, we build, we'll build again for 2015, the next global tournament. What do you make of uh, Ian Bell stumping? Close call there. Yeah, I thought it was a poor decision. Uh, how happy are you with England reaching the finals? That the top order has caught a lot of criticism for being slightly slow and stuff like that. People saying that this whether can this England ODA team be effective outside England? What's your take on the ODA outfit of England? Well, I think you know, obviously had a good tournament, get to the final. There's six other teams which would like to be in the situation we were in to start today. Um, we would like, obviously, for the to play a 50 over game, um, to, you know, real uh, for that tournament. But um, yeah, look, if we'd have won this 2020 game, then you know we wouldn't we wouldn't say that you know we wouldn't be saying that. So it's you know we went through and against New Zealand the 24 over game. So you have to adjust. Um, I'm proud of the way the lads have fought. We've been under a fair bit of pressure in this tournament. Quite a lot of criticism and flack have thrown our way, and yet we got to the final. Uh, and we played some good cricket and we just couldn't quite get over the line today. Alistair, can you just expand on, on that Ian Bell decision and, and why you felt it was such a poor decision in that? Sure. How do you think uh, the third umpire got to that decision? And also, can you um, just expand a little bit on some of the decisions that the players made under pressure, trying to chase down those runs, uh, obviously leading to dismissal after dismissal? Um, well, I only saw the replay a couple of times on the belly one, but um, you know maybe he saw maybe he saw a different angle than we saw. But I mean, it looked pretty pretty clear that it was in. But you know he's he's paid to to make the decisions, and if he's made the decision, we you know it's the umpire's game, isn't it? So that's that's that. And um, yeah, look, it, at, towards the end, you're always gonna you know when it's spinning as much as that, it's very hard to um, you know for the new guys coming in. So we needed a batter in at the end to, if we wanted to win that game. Could you comment on Bopara's performance throughout the tournament? And he has uh, matured a lot. And how do you feel about that? Yeah, he's coming and done really well. Obviously, in that game, 
he came in in that third one day when we changed the balance of side against New Zealand. Um, and he's obviously an experienced cricketer, um, and I thought he's handled himself really well in this tournament. He's batted to the situation um, all the time. Uh, he's bowled pretty well as well, and I thought he was just going to get us over the line today, and uh, unfortunately, wasn't meant to be. Uh, Alistair, 20 needed off 16 balls, six wickets in hand. Uh, how would you describe that? A panic or a choke or, or what? Um, yeah, clearly from from there you'd you'd back yourself to win more times than you'd you'd lose in that situation. But it shows how quickly games can change in 2020 when you lose a couple of wickets and you, the, the new guys coming in on that wicket are always going to find it quite hard to to hit hit those runs. So. Um, yeah, we got close. Obviously, that was a really good partnership from Morgs and Ravi to you know, get us back into the game. And yeah, um, yeah, we would probably win those games more times than not. But um, yeah, it's a tough, tough pill to swallow at the moment. Uh, Alex, uh, tough match. Uh, uh, did it seem like home at all to you? Uh, this this game. I mean, I think 90% of the support was for India. The ball was turning a lot. It was cold, but it probably seemed like India. Um, yeah, I mean, we didn't have too much support there. Um, but um, you know, I think the crowds have been good all, all tournament for for the sake of that. But um, yeah, there's quite a lot of Indian Indians there today. But um, we kind of expected that, um, so um, that's not an excuse why we lost. Yeah. Alistair, uh, England uh, lost by five runs. The same amount of runs you guys conceded in overthrows. Do you think that that was the difference, the fielding factor? Uh, look, you can start looking at all these little things, don't you? When you lose by such a, a tight margin. Um, <coughs> You know, you can. I'm sure the bowlers are bowl, going through their head saying, "Why did I bowl that ball?" And which went for four as well. Um, you, it's a very dangerous game to start doing that. Um, and same as the batters. So yeah, we might have given them those extra runs there, but I'd much rather guy run in and attack the ball like he did.